In this tutorial, we're going to download data on the class bivalvia from the paleobiology database and then use lookup tables and pivot tables in Excel to analyze the data. When we download data on an entire class, we can get a lot of information. Lookup tables and pivot tables are tools in Excel that can help us parse that data in a number of different ways. So first, we're going to download the data from PBDB. We want to download occurrence data for this analysis, so we're going to use PBDB Classic. And then we're going to click on Download Here, Collection, Occurrence, or Specimen Data. So here we're going to keep everything on this page the same, and we're going to add in bivalvia under taxa, because that's what we're interested in looking at. And then we're also going to download a bunch of other information about bivalvia. So to do that, we're going to go all the way over to Occurrence Fields. And so for this example, we're also going to download Order and Family Name. And then from here, you can see there's lots of other options. Um, but one of the fun ones is down here under Ecology Fields. If we click on this and scroll all the way down, we can select um, Life Habit. And that will tell us whether these bivalves were living on the surface or burrowing, which is for bivalves. Um, pretty important information to have. And then we're going to click on create data set. Oh, before that, we could also include, um, if you go to, let's see, include occurrences. There's lots of other things that you could do over here. So for example, if you just wanted to look at North American um, bivalves, you could just click North American. We're going to keep all of them for this analysis. You could uh, restrict your download to specific latitudinal or longitudinal range or paleolatitudinal or paleolongitudinal range, etc, etc. Okay, so now we have everything we want. We have our occurrence fields checked off. We have our basic options and then we're going to go down, um, put my name here, and create data set. Now for bivalves, this is a huge data set and so this is actually going to take a little bit of time to work. It could take a number of minutes, even five or ten minutes. And so for this part, you just need to be patient. Um, don't hit refresh, don't click the button again, <clears throat> as long as you see this little waiting for PaleoDB uh, thing in the bottom left hand corner, everything should be fine. Okay, so after being very patient, we get our data. We get a page like this. We're going to click download the data and it'll give us a couple of files. We want to download OCCS and ranges. That's what we're going to use for this analysis. Okay, so now when we have those downloaded, we're going to go into Excel, and this is what we'll see. So for OCCS, we have the class name, order name, family name, um, the life habit, um, a reference number for the collection, and then the PBDB 10 million year bin, which for some of them may not be there, for some of them it will be, so Carboniferous 5, etc. Um, you'll also see who uh, entered the um, collection into the database um, and a Creative Commons license for the data. So you'll notice that you can start scrolling and you can keep scrolling for a really long time. If you come over here to the right, you can actually just click and drag um, and I think, let's see how many records are there. You know, about 60,000 records. So this is a lot of data and Excel is going to have a pretty hard time um, analyzing it uh, using the methods that you may be familiar with. So this is where our lookup tables and our pivot tables are going to come in and be really helpful. The first thing we want to do is get fads and lads for each genus. How do we do this? What we've downloaded here is occurrence data. So there's more than one row for each genera in here possibly hundreds of rows, each time it shows up in a collection. So we want to use the range data we downloaded and match the ranges from here, so genus, base of range, top of range, with the genera that are over here, occurrence genus name. This is where lookup tables come in. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make two new columns over here for FAD, first appearance, and LAD, last appearance. And now this is where we're going to have to use our lookup tables. First thing we want to do is we want to make sure that <clears throat> our ranges data and our occurrence data are in the same file. So I'm just going to go over to ranges here, and I'm going to come down to the little tab 
just click it and drag it into the occurrences one. So now they're both in the same file, which is convenient. Um, and so now we're in the occurrences one, and this is where we're going to start writing our equations uh, in this first box up here. Okay, so now we're going to start entering our equation. We start with an equal signs. We go to VLOOKUP. And it's going to sort of give you all these confusing things in here, but I'll walk you through it. So the lookup value that we want to access is the, the genus name, because that's what we're going to be matching between these two sheets. So here, that's H3, or sorry, H2 is our first uh, genus name, and then a column, and then it wants to know where we're going to be matching to. Um, so if you click down here on ranges and then go back, it has occurrences, but we'll just go in here and type ranges. So it's um, single quotation mark, then the name of the sheet where you have your ranges, end quotation mark, exclamation point. And then you want to tell it that you want to look at the entire sheet um, of ranges. And so that's going to be dollar sign A to dollar sign F, which is just the range of columns in your ranges table. Then 2 is the column that you want to get the um, information from. True. Return. Oh, there's always an error. Okay. Ah, yes. A semicolon. Colon. Okay. So if we go back to ranges, column 2 is base of range, which was our first appearance. So that's why we have a 2 in our equation here, because it's saying, okay, match the thing in H2 to ranges through the entire thing, which is A to F, and then return the value that's in column two of ranges, which is the base of range. Um, and if, if you match these things, then return to return um, and put the number in. And that's what it did. And we can do basically the same thing for a lad if we click on this little box and drag it over. Um, now we still want this to be H2, so you're going to have to go in and fix it, and then we want this to be 3, because 3, column 3 here, 1, 2, 3, is the top of range. There we go. Now, perhaps the trickiest part of this is actually filling in all of these cells, because as I've just told you, there's 60,000 rows. And so I'm going to show you a little trick to make that a little bit easier. What you're going to do is you're going to scroll all the way down using the sidebar. Um, Okay, and in the last box here, just below our last line, just put in a D, and you'll see why that's useful later. All right, now we're going to go back up to the top row, so use the slider to go all the way up to the top row. Click on your first box, and on a Mac, you're going to hold down Command-Shift-Down-Arrow. And that's going to select every single cell from the very top to the very bottom. Then you're going to click Control D, and it's going to fill in the equation for every single cell, like magic. Okay, we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Click up here, Shift Command Down Arrow, and then Control D, like that. And now we've got first appearances and last appearances for every single uh, occurrence of bivalvia in the paleobiology database. Okay, so now we've got FAD and LAD data for every single occurrence, but it's still really disorganized and we're not really sure what to make of it or even what kinds of questions we can ask with this data. And that's where pivot tables come in. So we're going to go to data, pivot table. And it's going to sort of fill this in already for you, so you hopefully don't have to enter anything here. But basically, you want to use a table in this workbook. I mean, you want to use the entire workbook, which is what's described here. And we just want to put it in a new worksheet within our file. That's great. So we're just going to click OK. Now we get this blank area over here, but over here the pivot table builder is really what we're interested in. And this might look a little bit different depending on what version of Excel you're using. But if we scroll down here, we can see that all of the data um, that we downloaded, all of the column labels are now field names. So let's say we wanted to look at orders. And if I click on order, it's just going to say count of order name. And you'll see down here under values, it's saying 
count of order. Okay, that's useless. So now we know how many orders there are, but we don't really care. But if we drag this into row labels, all of a sudden now all of the orders are rows. All right, so now let's say we want to know something else about all of these orders. Let's click FAD. Again, the automatic thing is it's just going to say count of first appearance. But if you click on the I, let's say you say maximum. So what's the maximum first appearance of this order? Okay, so now you're seeing the first appearance of every single order. Because the first appearance of a genus in an order is the first appearance of the order itself. And if you wanted to do lads, again, it's going to automatically put you in count here. You can just click here, and here you want to go min for lads. All right, so now you have the ranges of every single one of your orders. Other fun things you can do here would be, what about our life habits? So again, it's just going to go count of life habit, but what if we go like this? Okay, so now it's showing us for each order uh, what types of life habits are represented in each one. So we can see that some of the orders only have infaunal representatives and others have more than one. And again, it's showing you your fads and lads. If you wanted to know how many were in each one of these, then you could just go to, um, let's say, we could actually just take fads again and go to values and have counts. Okay, so this is going to tell you how many occur occurrences are in each one of these categories um, within here. And get rid of that. We can say, all right, how about family? So this is now telling us the, how many families within each of these orders fall within each one of these categories. So as you can see, lookup tables are pretty powerful, and I encourage you to play around with them. Um, and I bet you'll find some really fun things to do with them, and hopefully that will help you in your project.